Hello, hello, c'est Sophie, it's Sophie from Belgium. I got so many positive remarks and questions on my Instagram post from two days ago about the deconstruction and reconstruction of this one, my junk journal. And I thought, mm, I'm going to show you a little bit what I meant with not laying flat. I pulled down a little bit my journals in which I have been working the couple of years ago. And I realized that almost all of the time I bind my journals or let's say the front cover and the back cover, I make them myself, I make the spine and so I can decide myself how thick I want to book, how many pages I want in a signature and in which direction I want to go. My journals have, they have to endure a lot, they travel a lot and I splatter on the pages, I put a lot of water on the pages so they, they have to be quite durable and you can see they just lay flat. I can even turn them almost 360 degrees fully open. And here is my older journal. Yeah, they just lay flat and they bend very easily. Now with my gem journal, reconstruction of an old book, I had a problem in that sense that the spine, I'm going to come a little bit closer, the spine, which I'm going to show you, the old spine on the book, measured two inches and it was, it's a hard spine and I don't know if I can say it was curved, it was bending and it was deciding the direction of my pages where they would go and I really didn't like it. I started working in it a couple of months and I had to change it. So it was fixed on the covers and it used to push the book open and upwards, right here and right there. Now I have no problems when you work in a journal, especially when it's recently bound, it will always come up a little bit and I work with giant clips, that's all okay. But what I don't want is that the pages are being pushed up because the spine pushes it up. So basically what I did, I removed all the signatures and just started all over again. I cut off the front and the back spine, made a clot for the spine on the inside, made a clot on the spine for the outside. I love always to work with my own cotton fabrics on which I clean my stencils and my brushes, you know that from Instagram where I talk a lot about it. And that was it. Now some of you said it's probably because I made the spine too thick. And I'm going to show you a little bit closer. The spine on the old book was two inches wide. So when I reconstruct a book, I still like to have a big fat book, but I want it to be able to swell up a little bit because on all my pages regularly I glue and I collage. So I leave the possibility for the book to come more and more open by the end of the working in the book and filling up the book. I'm going to guide you a little bit. I'm going to show you what I did in the book. Um, I'm a paper lover and I love to work with old paper, new papers, handwritten papers from friends. Uh, as long as it's script and fonts, I'm happy. Oh, this was the old spine. I forgot to show you. This was the fabric that I removed from the old spine and everything came apart. So this is the new one. So basically you can see old papers. Sometimes I put a little bit gesso on the outside of the page to strengthen it up. The problem was when you use a lot of vintage papers, when you deconstruct the book and you remove the signatures to bind it again, they can easily break up. So what I did on quite a lot of pages when they looked fragile, I took paper and glued it on to reinforce the spine a little bit and it gives a different dimension. I don't like to start working on an empty page. This gives already a dimension and an easier start, kickoff start to start collaging or journaling. So what am I using in my journals? I slap down a lot of papers from friends. When you buy something online, when I bought with 
Esther's shop, badass stamp studio. She makes beautiful little stickers. I keep it all in my journal. Hello, Esther. She has beautiful stamps. She has also in her shop beautiful dices to, I showed this in my Instagram pictures. Uh, I made this journal with rings A5 and she has these dies that you can put in your cuttle book to make the papers exact with the tab and everything. I love it. I'll show it in another video. Old papers, what I loved, here is again the paper that I glue on the inside of the pages to reinforce it, what I love to work with are the pages from the Flow magazine. I think they're stunning, they're not shiny and they take paint very well. My parents and grandparents kept a lot of papers for me and I love to work with them. My parents grew up in, I think it was almost the Middle Ages, where no computers. So when they used to write letters, they used carbon papers and they kept prints of all their notes and letters. And the, print, the, the carbon paper version of those old typewriter machines, I love them. It's not very clear font, it's like you see it's a copy and I love it. It's not clear uh, imprinted. So I keep my handwritten papers. I love to work with tracing paper and there are different kinds of tracing paper on the market. I just came to realize that. So you have tracing paper that is very thick and when you write with acrylic inks on them, the ink when it dries up, it makes the paper, I can see a little bit shriveling up and hear that beautiful sound and sometimes I cut it down, I will glue it down, I don't know yet what I'm going to do, a jelly print paper, old music sheets, a paper from Lulu La Berlu and her quote, very important. Now well, I took the advantage when I was rebinding the book that on that moment I was still able to stitch it in. You can't do that once the book is fully completed and stitched onto the spine. You can still sew on the side but not close to the spine and a paper cutter makes it easy to make the little envelope on the page. Paper I kept from our Bruch calligrapher Jürgen Verkamst. I love his handwriting. Beautiful. Um, other papers. Again reinforcement. Uh, my little family. My husband is the best. It's me. My daughter, I like to picture her with something in her hand from the nature. She loves flowers. She grew up at the other side of the world in the middle of the desert. And when we used to come on holidays in Belgium, she used to take pictures of everything she saw outside, whether it were flowers, trees, plants, grass, weeds, mud, you name it. She was taking pictures. She was absolutely discovering the nature in Europe. Susan Galito in California. Hello Susan. Jelly prints again, handwritten papers, the flow papers. And as you can see, I don't like white flat papers. I need already a jump start to start working on. So these are the papers that I have on my desk to clean brushes. It's easier to look at for me and I bind them in. I don't adapt them to the width of the book. I will do that later. I can cut it out, tear it down, glue it, stitch it. I can still change it. Inky papers. I love old notary papers. My grandma. And it's handwritten and they scratch down words. I don't think I will glue a lot on this. I just love it as it is. So precious. Old book pages. I love stationery papers. It's from Ava Papierware. I think Dutch and Belgian people know. It's quite thicker. It's thicker than just normal printing paper. And it takes gesso, ink and paints very well. A paper I made with Robin Marie Smit last August in her workshop here in Belgium. Awesome! And I have a lot of papers from my grandparents that I never touched and I decided from now on in every single journal I bind there will be papers from my marraine and mon parent and so at least they travel with me and otherwise they lay there doing nothing. I love 
to have them with me. Hippolyte de Kort Meulaert, 1937. Oof. Inky Inky. Uh, signature of Robin Marie. Collage. Inks, jelly print, waving vellum. My Marraine, 1987. Ooh. So, what else do I have? I have this uh, red rosin paper. Can't find it in Belgium. I brought it from the States. I love it. Underground paper, very durable, strong, thick. And I just put gesso on it. I don't like to see plain paper. Very thin paper. Handmade paper that I inked up. Old papers from Nîmes, France. And I, oh, I also love to add some cookie bags. They're thicker, but they give that nice music when you turn those pages. My diary a little bit. And um, what else do I have? My marine. Old investment papers from my grandparents. Oof. Um, again, notary paper, architectural drawings, anything can go inside. All those papers will get some collage on them. Again, the thick vellum paper. I don't think it must be tracing paper. Jürgen, I love his letters. Police. Uh, that's about it. I started on my background papers to put some collage. I stopped. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I will see. Papers from Esther. Her online bags, they come always. Her online purchases, they come in nice little bags. And oh, this is a book I bought. We're very fortunate to live in Damme in Bruges, where the little village has a few second-hand bookshops where you can find treasures. And I found this on a flea market in Dama. It's an old priest book that fell apart, that has the most wonderful written Latin. It's awesome! Again, different background papers and jelly prints, handmade paper, my handwriting. Again, my grandparents' papers, a collage that you know from Instagram. That's about it. End of the book. That's about it. Yeah. Any questions? Shoot. I'll answer. Um, I'm always there on Instagram. Uh, you shoot me questions on YouTube. Bye bye.